Hello, I'm Joseph. I'm Hitesh. And I'm Jared. And we'll be talking about this interpretation of biopolymers today. In class, we learned about biopolymers. It's a revolutionary organic polymer that could be applied to practically anything you can think of. Specifically in class, we explored the topic of gelation of autocarrageenans and enzyme specificity. In class, we used calcium ions, which have a plus two charge, and autocarrageenans, which have parts of a negative one charge. And by using the catalyst, the calcium ions, we're able to create different gels, hydrogels, with different strength at different speeds. So gels in our lab, iota carrageen, uh, can become liquids again by going by coming in contact with the degrading enzyme. Uh, we use something called bromelain to break down our iota carrageenine. And in our drawing, the degrading enzyme is represented by a piranha, and it's chowing down on that giant piece of seaweed. And it, and the seaweed is represent the seaweed represents our gel polymer. And and um, for number four, um, it requires that it requires us to look on the nanoscale. And in our polymer, we see that we go onto the nanoscale and we see cells representing the inside of the seaweed. Going back to the calcium catalyst, in can I have the in the picture, these octo how do you use this? The octopuses over here represents the calcium ions, which binds to these strands of kelp, we assume, which represents the iodocarrageenins monomers. And over here is a barrier that shows that different concentrations of I of, of calcium ions create different strengths as seen as the, the slicing over here with the mermaid happily flying away from this bonding. So there are uh, a few things that uh, this artist could have included which were not required but the homework did say, you know, if you want to include this you can also include that as well. So the first of which was heating and cooling. So in the actual experiment, what would have happened when we heated our uh, polymer gel? So I'm going to go into a little bit of uh, chemistry here. So uh, a very basic concept is that heat is energy. So an increase in heat is an increase in energy. So when we increase that heat, we can actually break these bonds between our polymer, which is our seaweed, and our calcium 2 plus, which is our octopi. So oh, we didn't see anything like that, any heating. So we thought that perhaps there was some kind of predator, like maybe a shark that's supposed to represent heating. So that shark comes on, and then all the octopi you know, flee away so they don't get eaten. And that would be a way that our calcium 2 plus would be separated from our polymer, which is the seaweed. Now, another thing is that uh, different connections can uh, create different strengths. So I'm going to go into more chemistry. So. Uh, We've got calcium, and now calcium uh, has two electrons flying around it that it would love nothing more than to get rid of. Now, along our polymer, our seaweed, it has all these spots that would love to gain an electron. So the natural thing is for our calcium to bond to that seaweed because it wants to get rid of it, and the seaweed wants to gain it, or the polymer. So since calcium has two electrons it wants to get rid of, it can bond to two different places. However, if we, for example, used aluminum 3 plus, then it could bond to three different places. And that way, it would create an even stronger uh, poly uh, polymer gel. So we didn't see that in here. So we thought, well, what if we included different animals that had different uh, positive charges to them? So maybe there was a fish that was meant to represent uh, lithium 1 plus, or maybe there was, I don't know, a squid that was meant to represent aluminum 3 plus, or some other way to show that different, uh, different ions can create different strengths. And there's one more concept that's a little bit confusing. So this is about how biopolymers can, uh, be, can act as a very strong scaffolding. So the best way I can think to explain this would be comparing the pyramids of Giza to the Eiffel Tower. And we actually saw that example in one of our courses. So uh, the both of these structures are equally strong, but the pyramid of Giza is completely you know, solid. You can't really add anything to that. Meanwhile, the Eiffel Tower has got all these holes in it, so you could add more to it. Now, biopolymers act the same as the Eiffel Tower, where you can add more things to it 
It just acts as the strong base that you can add things to. Thank you. But yep. uh, and one more thing I want to add. We couldn't think of we couldn't think of any way that this artist could have added uh, could have included that scaffolding concept. Thank you. Thank Does you. anyone have any questions? Aaron, come on. I know you've got questions out there. Uh, so you said uh, eating and sleeping are the best survival elements. Can yeah. you explain how you would add eating to the picture? How would you add eating? Okay. Well, uh, so, so, by the way, the gentleman in the back said that the, there's heating and cooling, and he was wondering how it could affect the polymers. Well, what I would say is I think the best way is to assume that what we already have is a cooled version, because in the, in the experiment that we did, we had these hot plates to keep them hot, to keep them separated. And uh, as, soon as, we took the, as soon as we took the calcium 2 plus and the polymer off those hot plates, some of those examples, they came together immediately. So, since these are already together, I would assume that this, what we have in this image, is the cooled version, but adding that predator, or I mean some other way of adding heat, would be the way that we show that it's been heated. And to add on to the topic of how heat affects hydrogels, as heat increases, the solubility of things such as iodic carrageenans and calcium ions increases. As a result, as it cools down, the hydrogel is able to form while, it's, while when it's hot, and maintains its soluble aqueous form. All of our parents are biopolymers experts now. <laughs> All right, I have another question then. Okay, so. You mentioned, you showed the sort of zoomed in thing where you looked at like the individual blocks that make up the polymer. What were those individual blocks actually called? The blocks are called monomers. Monomers, right? So, so this looks like just sort of like a single, a single type, a polymer made up of a single type of monomer, right? Um, yeah. Do you remember what it's called when there's polymers made up of different types of monomers? And is there any way possibly that that could have been represented in this drawing? So uh, when it comes to the name of it, I plead the fifth. But when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to representing it, uh, something that did occur to us is that perhaps, uh, I don't have the laser point drawn right there. This could have been what you're referring to because it's not one specific monomer. It's these different, it's, you know, this stalk and it's also this bulb. But, uh, yeah. My, my compatriots weren't so sure about that, so we didn't include it. Yeah, for it to be a polymer, wait, even with different ingredients, there has to be a repetition of pattern. And we could not see that clearly throughout that. But then the person who drew it could have included that with, say, like another kelp or something like that, made of, made of more than one ingredient in a repeating pattern. So just for parents' knowledge out there, so it's a, it's a copolymer when it's made up of different types. And if it was repeating, it would be a, a block of polymer. <coughs> yeah. Any other? Any other questions? Uh, artists, would you would you stand up? Uh, I think. I think she had a question in the back. Oh. Yeah, I had a carrageenans. It is a polysaccharide based. A Oh wait, before I answer that, she, she asked why idocarrageenans may come from. And idocarrageenin is a polysaccharide-based polymer. And idocarrageenans, um, I think it comes from an algae. So it actually, it comes from something that is directly in the drawing. Yeah. Uh, Which is? Kelp. Seaweed. Seaweed. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So it actually comes from seaweed, so it's actually a almost very literal <laughs> sort of metaphor in this case. Good question, thank you for, for adding that. So now, artists, would you please uh, stand up so we can acknowledge you.